Hi and welcome to part 8 of this video series. In this part we're going to make it possible to generate the invoice PDF and download it to, to your computer. So we have a few tasks we're going to do today. The first thing is going to install WK HTML to PDF. If you go to this address you will find a download button here. So you can install for Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu and a few other Linux distros. I have already installed it, but you need to do this before you can continue. So I will just go back here and set this to done. Next task is to install PDF Kit. This is going to use this, which is a software for the computer, but this here is a Python package. So if I just copy this, stop, as a pip install django PDF Kit and hit enter. And then I can run the server again when that's done. Perfect. I can set this to done already. Next step now is to create the Django view for generating the PDF. So if I just scroll up and find invoice slash views.py. First I want to import the PDF kit. This should be done on top. Import PDF kit like this. Then I just want to move this up so we get everything in the right order. I like to have Python in uh, import at the top, then Django, and then packages we have installed, and then local imports like this. Then there are three more things I want to import from Django, which is HTTP response, and the shortcut we're going to use for getting the invoice from the database, and then the loader to get the template. Then I need to import a few more things from the REST framework. I need to import something called status, authentication and permissions. And I also want to import a few decorators like API view, authentication classes and permission classes. And a response called response. So it's a little bit of import right now but you'll probably understand how this works in a few seconds. And the last thing I want to import is the team model we are going to use to get the correct invoice. And then the, I want to start with the view. First I create or add the decorator because this view is only going to support the get request method. And now I use the two other decorators authentication clause because I'm going to use token authentication because when the user is signed in you're going to use the token authentication and the permission authenticated. These are already built in in the invoice view set and similar, but you need to declare this for the views here. And then I said def generate PDF, pass in the request and then the invoice ID. So this is a regular function based view from Django. And then I get the invoice from the, from the back end by saying get object or 404. So this will return an error if it doesn't exist. We use the primary key from the URL and the created by needs to be the requested user. And then I get the team and then I'll first the list of team and then I say the first one because right now you can only have one team per user. Next we say template equals get template which is one of the functions we imported here. And this will get the template called pdf.html. I will create this soon. And then we say template.render and we pass in invoice and team. So this is just like the render function we are used to in Django, but it will give us HTML instead of rendering and show it to the screen. And when that's done, we call PDF kit and we want to create a PDF from a string, which is this HTML. And we don't want to pass in any options now. And then we prepare a response, which is the HTTP response, pass in the PDF, and then we set content type to application slash PDF so that the browser knows what type of content it's getting. And we also need to set the content disposition to attachment, and then we set the file name. We're going to change this in the front end so it doesn't matter what's set here. And then we can just return response. Then we can import this into the URLs, just append it to the end there. And here we just say generate PDF, 
and pass in the view and set the name and save. Actually, this isn't correct because, sorry, I want to add invoices first there and int invoice ID. So now the URL will be API slash V1 slash invoices and then the ID and then generate PDF and save. Next step now is to create a new folder in the invoice app called templates and in here we create a new file pdf.html. First I create the usual doc type like this and HTML and then head and below the head a body set the title just to invoice and then in here I add the styling I'm not going to go through all of this but I will add this file in the description below so you can see it yourself on github it's just first a little resizing or no, resetting and then set some sizes some padding a little font size and we use display inline block to align items next to each other and add some margin and a little bit like that so it's not anything too fancy we just add some borders and some of the fonts are bold set some width and similar and then we have a summary which is a I get a little background and some padding but you will see what this looks like soon like that we need to use inline styling for this PDF generation to work oops forgot to add an Y this element body of course First in here I create a new div class top which will be the information about the invoice and then a new div element top left which will be information about the client and yourself. First we show information about your team, team name, we don't have the address or city or something similar yet so just add some static information so invoice list just to know that this is you. Below there I get some information about the client from the invoice like the name, the address, the zip code and similar. And then at the right side of the screen or PDF got div class top right and in here add a title invoice and then the invoice number oops h2 like that. And then this is the email for the team, but we haven't added this either yet, but we're going to come back to that later. One more split for the invoice date. And here we use a filter from Django because we are going to use this format. This is the one I'm used to here in Norway, but you can change this to whatever you prefer. And then we use one more split for getting the due date instead of due days. So this is a function I will show you very soon how we create. So it's just invoice.get due date and if the invoice has the sender reference we want to show this to the user and the same if there's a client contact reference we show it there. And then below here I want to loop through all of the items. Here I want to show the title, quantity, unit price, what watch rate it's selected and the sum so in here we loop through all of them. So we just get them by saying for item in invoice.items.all and as you can see here is also one more function we will create before we can test this. And then below here we create a new div class summary for showing the summary of the invoice. First we have a simple title. Now we split it and show the left where we have the invoice number, the due date, we use this function again and then we show the bank account number and then at the right side or the bottom right of the invoice we show the net amount, the watt amount and then the amount the user has to pay. So then we can save this and then I want to continue. I think I can go back here now and set a few of these to done. This is done. This is done and then we want to create the model function. Before I continue I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. The model functions are for example the get due date and the get gross amount. 
So if I just go into models.py, first I want to import a few things at the top. First I import decimal, and I also need time delta so we can calculate the due date. The first function we're going to create is for the invoice. This is the get due date. This will just return self.created it, and then we plus time delta days equals self dot due days and this is the due days that is selected in the front end here which is default to 14 and then the next function is for the item the def get gross amount first I want to calculate the watt rate and here I need to convert this to a decimal instead of a floating field and then I just return self dot net amount plus net amount multiplied by a watt rate, which is for example 0 0.14 or 0 0.25 and save. So now everything in the back end is ready. Then I can go back here and set this to be done. Then for the front end I want to install something called JS file download, which makes it possible to download it using JavaScript. So if I just stop the view server and paste it here and click enter and I can run the view server again and I can set this to done. Next step is now to go into invoice.view, scroll up here, below here at HR and then a button and we click it. We want to call the get PDF function we're going to create and we have a title called download PDF. So if I just copy this name scroll down into methods below the get invoice create a new method like this then we want to get the invoice ID from the router and then it's just a simple axios command we get which is the route to where we created here invoices and invoice ID generate PDF just like this we need to set the response type to blob because if not, the file download won't work. And when we get the result back, we call file download, pass in the data, and then we set the invoice name or the, the PDF name we want to use. If there are any errors, we just show them in the console. So the last thing before we can test this is to import this. So at the top here, below axios we can say const file download equals require js dash file dash download and save so there are no errors now so hopefully if i go back here now refresh we have the download pdf and if i click it there is something wrong no it got there just took a few seconds to generate it so then we have this here now first we have information about our team and then the client, invoice one, a little bit of information to the right here. As you can see here, this is the date it was generated and this is the due date, which is 14 days later. And then we have the items. The watt rate is zero, so the sum is similar to the unit price. And we have the summary with a little bit more information. Perfect. And then I can go back here and set this task as well to done and that was it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it and that everything is working with you too. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment below and answer as soon as I can. If you want notification when the next part is published, you need to subscribe and also remember to click the bell. If you like this video, I would be really happy if you click like below. It will help me grow the channel. So see you in the next video.